Hello and welcome to Kerbal Space Ram. Wow, there's a lot of crap out there. Um, yeah, this is my research and development save. And uh, last night I was going to record a plane reviews episode, and uh, I kind of accidentally did something else instead. And that something else was... Well, making something, it's not quite an F-35, but it's basically an F-35. I'm going to go ahead and hit T for the SAS, and when I hit 7, and see it opens bays on the front and the rear, and the, oh yeah, I forgot. So originally I had the engine tilt down automatically as well. However, uh, there was an issue with transitioning to forward flights when you have a, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, basically, when you have a full fuel load, you can notice the fuel load isn't full right now. It isn't actually all the way full because uh, this will not have enough power to take off if you don't have the fuel load full. Um, if you do have... I meant if you do have it. I meant if you do have it. Yeah, it won't take off if you have a full fuel load, which is why I... Um, which is also part of why I needed to adjust the engine slightly because the engine also uh, if if you transition quickly from VTOL flight to uh, normal forward flight what happens is instead of flying you know like you'd expect it uh, it doesn't go well and oh I've accidentally not disabled these uh, yeah I'll need to fix that real quick uh, for now uh, I can you know do that a little bit um, I'm trying to do this while also uh, controlling the fact that I'm flying is a little bit difficult, but not super difficult. Uh, one characteristic I like to make of any VTOL aircraft that I make is it has to be easy to fly. Um, you notice it does actually use uh, a ducted fan blade there for our uh, other, you know, for our lift fan. So it is based on the real thing in that particular respect. It, it is based on uh, actual characteristics and as you can see as we bring it we're, we're basically in full regular flight mode now uh, I, I was a little slow to turn it off but uh, we're at we're in full flight mode there is a slight issue uh, which is that this even though I have it set to disengage the motor when you um, when you transition out of that mode it doesn't do it I don't know why but it doesn't do it um, and and that's slightly frustrating uh, just so you know, the controls, aside from, you know, the standard afterburner on key 1, because I always put the afterburner on key 1, and turning the nose wheel steering on and off with the number 9, which is not as standard of a thing for me. That's something I've been doing more recently, as I realized it was uh, more necessary. I didn't really realize it was necessary before. But anyhow, 7 is what toggles the lift fan and the bays, and... H and N toggle the pitch, or the deploy angle, of the ducted fan blades, and so they allow you to control uh, exactly how much lift you're getting from them. You're not going to need to adjust them much. Uh, I set them at the right amount for takeoff, minus just the tiniest bit of difference, so that when you activate them on the runway, you notice that the plane pitches up, like it pulls up because the front starts lifting off the ground, but it doesn't uh, fall over backwards. And um, basically, as soon as I get the engine in position and I throttle up, the throttle is attached to the torque on the motor for the lift fans up front so that uh, they only activate with the main throttle. Uh, you basically use full throttle to take off with... Uh, when it's got a full fuel load. With less fuel, it takes significantly less throttle, and you have to be a bit more careful, but you use h and N or your forward and backwards translate keys in order to control the blade pitch, and then you use I and K uh, to control the engine tilt. So yeah, it's, uh, I, I'm just, yeah, yeah, I, I was, I was kind of, I, I didn't expect me to, to manage to do this, honestly. Um, I'm also not sure what's going to happen when I try to transition in flight. Like, I've never... Oh, dear. I've never... Uh, this, this particular system, I've tested it for flight, but I have not tested it for landing. So I, I have to admit I'm a little concerned about it for landing. Uh, let's go ahead and... No, we're not going to... Well, yeah, I guess we're turning around. 
<laughs> That's probably a bad idea, to be honest, but, uh... Alright, let's throttle up just a bit. Throttle up a bit more. Like, a lot more, because we're starting to fall too quickly. Oh, good, I did put the landing gear down. Oh, dear. I, uh... Okay, okay, okay. And cut the throttle entirely. Yeah, I dropped it slightly. That's not really how you do it in real life, but uh, it's okay. It's got no damage. I do have the Kerbal Crash system installed, so uh, you can I can receive damage from that system uh, if I'm not careful. Let's go ahead and disengage the VTOL mode. Make sure that this motor is disengaged. Because, see, it auto-engages appropriately like it's supposed to with with the first press of 7, but then it doesn't disengage. And yes, it is set to the toggle in the action group, not to just engage. Which, it makes it very strange that it's not uh, working very well. This thing has a very, uh, very good glide capability, actually, I believe. I'm not 100% certain. I haven't fully tested that, but I did notice while flying it just now that uh, transitioning from... VTOL to horizontal flight is extremely easy. It's actually easier than I thought it was, and I believe that has to do with this thing having a great lift ratio. And uh, we're just going to test that right now. Okay. Oh, not not great. Uh, but it did take us quite a low throttle? Speed. I meant speed. It took us quite a low speed for stalling to become an issue. Let's go ahead and set the throttle to... Let's go two pips. And, uh, you know what? Let's get a little bit more speed before I cut the... <laughs> Excuse me, before I cut the throttle that low. I'm going to see... Actually, let's go ahead and do one-third throttle. I'm going to see how... How early it can pick up off the ground. Okay. So it basically can fly, it can almost fly at 30 meters per second, like, basically, well, let me rephrase that. See, it can fly at 30 meters per second, it just, um, you have to, like, see, because KSP doesn't simulate stalling, like, see, I can fly at 20 meters per second, I just can't land at 20 meters per second, because, uh, the, whatchamacallit, Oops, I cut the throttle entirely, I didn't mean to. Uh, because I will tail strike, obviously. This does have quite a lot of clearance on the ground, though, you might have noticed. Uh, that's kind of important for the engine to be able to tilt down, which um, I'm also very proud of this mechanism, because I've tried to do this kind of thing several times before, and I was never happy with the mechanism and the aesthetics of tilting the engine. But in this particular case, let me go ahead and get a little bit more speed before I do it, because I want to cut the engine while I'm uh, messing with things. So, like, uh, with this engine, you know, it's... Basically, it's a hinge with... Um, whatchamacallit? It's a hinge with these nose cones just on either side, and it's, it's using the part clipping sheet, although you could just use struts to do that. I just do this to reduce part count. And then, of course, uh, because I'm using that particular cheat, it does mean that there's no, oops, there's no fuel flow. And so in order to deal with the lack of fuel flow, you can see, obviously, I have a couple of uh, fluid, fluid pipes? Fluid, you know, you know what I'm trying to say. The, the fuel lines, the fuel lines that are just uh, on the sides there. And uh, I think it looks quite nice like that, actually. And... I'm very happy with the performance. The center of mass and center of lift are very, very close together. And the balance was kind of by accident. As I was just building it, uh, it just got really close to correct. I am going to save it as the K35, though, because while I was saving it as the F35 a minute ago, while flying it right now, I'm like, yeah, it's, it's definitely inspired by, and it's definitely got some characteristics correct, but some of the overall body shape is just not quite right and while I feel like this is the closest I can get with stock parts without um, without using a ton of parts like some other designs use I just I, I don't feel comfortable with calling it that because it's not really an F-35 it's just very similar I do absolutely love how it performs at low speeds though we have supreme maneuverability 
very floaty. It's a very floaty fighter as well because because of the design of the various features that are on it. Unfortunately, the rear engine does have a rather low lift to weight, uh, thrust to weight ratio rather. Um, with the afterburner on, it gets it gets pretty close to the real performance of the F-35, but without the afterburner, it's not great. That said, the lift fan does a lot of lifting, so it's great for the VTOL, which is awesome! Obviously, I love that, so uh, we're just going to do a uh, short landing without even using the VTOL to assist, because I think that is a fun way to end taking a look at this particular aircraft and touchdown. And uh, you notice that I basically stalled it a little bit, but then pitched forward to fall the rest of the way to avoid a tail strike, which is, I don't know if anyone's ever done that in real life. It's probably not a great idea in real life, but uh, it's something that I've done. And um, I also want to say thank you to Samon KSP on Kerbal X because uh, they made an F-35 that inspired me to make mine um, because I... S I always thought that I couldn't make an F-35, to be honest. I tried it very briefly, once or twice. I think I tried it with the QuizTech Aero mod parts, and it just it wasn't great. Like, I couldn't do it, and so I kind of gave up. And then I saw their version, and I was like, huh, I can do this. I can do this better. And so I did. At least, what I personally feel is better. Obviously, uh, everyone can be their own uh, critic. Also, I just love that I put the intake in there like that. I just... Ah, my favorite part of this whole design is the lifting fan. Like, I feel like I did a really good job with the lifting fan. I'm also very happy with the... I, you know, just the whole thing, really. But, like, especially the engine mount and the lifting fan. Like, it just feels right, man. In any case, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy. You know what? While we're here, I think you might be curious to know about the older version of the pivot design for the F-35. Because originally, it was a completely different mechanism that is a bit more reminiscent of the real thing, but simply takes up too much space. And that is using two hinges clipped in with a couple of these... Oops, hold on. Clipped in with a couple of these uh, structural tubes and these adapters in order to make that kind of more round pivot thing. But this makes the engine stick down way too far. And so I had to scrap the idea. As you can see, the lift pan sequence is in place already, uh, or at least you can see the exterior of it. It, it is in place in there as well. But uh, my first little work in progress, you can also see the wing is a bit different. I think it's a little more reminiscent of the real thing in terms of the rough overall shape, but I just really hate how things are a bit wrong. Also, you might notice there's an asymmetry here, and that's because I accidentally placed these NCS adapters with radial symmetry, and that was screwing up the entire thing. Uh, when I go to the work in progress 2, you can see that I tried to fix the wings. They're, they're more similar to how they are now. However, they're still on the radial symmetry, which means these landing gear are actually attached to the center fuselage instead of to the wings, which is kind of terrible. Also, because it had that other engine on it, I had to use the giant landing gear, and it just was like, I'm not going to have these landing gear on here. This is just bullshit. And of course, oh yes, this was... I believe this was just after I tweaked the, uh, I put these back on with a uh, mirror symmetry instead of a radial so that I could attach things more appropriately. And you can see I've adjusted the path on these slightly. They're, they're very slightly rotated inwards and then slightly back outwards in order to get the exact shape that I wanted at the back there. And then I accidentally skipped number four. This is very similar to the finish design. I believe, yes, there's still no fuel in it. For testing, I put fuel in this particular set of tanks, these two tanks, because they're extremely close to the center of mass. So it would give me an accurate idea of how this performed with the center of mass like this. And this actually flies uh, just fine. In fact, um, with the low fuel load, it can technically fly a little bit better with the transition between VTOL and normal flight. Although, because this is the work in progress 5 and not the work in progress 
uh, whatchamacallit, <laughs> 5.2. This is lacking a battery. So you notice uh, only the bay on the back opened. This is lacking a battery, and so it runs out of power so quickly that it can't actually do anything. And the 5.2 is roughly the finished design, I believe. Actually, no, this is just the version that just has these two tanks, I believe. Yeah, and so you can see the thrust to weight ratio on the engines by itself is 1.09, which is closer to the reality. Uh, of course, uh, you only need about half of that to take off in VTOL, as I already demonstrated with the other version. And so with this version, we do have the battery, I think. Yeah, there it is, 1,050, and... Uh, oh, we only have 1,000 out of 1,050. Why does... Why does the Mark 1 not have any electricity in it? Oh, I accidentally removed the electricity instead of the monoprop. <laughs> that explains why it didn't have enough power. Wow, I'm an idiot. All right, well, in any case, we're going to go ahead and engage SAS. We're going to hit 7, which may or may not have already started spinning these. No, it did not. I believe it's because, yes, this version does not have the torque tied to the, the whole system. And... Uh, I believe the fins may be, yes, they're at a, they're at a very high angle of uh, deploy angle, which would be way too much. So if we put it at 100 with them at 3, you can see they're already, in fact, they're already trying to have us take off quite, quite severely. But uh, once I activate the rear engine, put it to about a third throttle or so, um, not a third, I meant a little over half. Uh, let's go ahead and go a little bit higher. You'll see that she takes off quite quickly. Uh-oh. Uh, okay, a little too much throttle on the rear there. Oh dear. I overcompensated, maybe? <laughs> oh man, this is, uh, this is a terrible, uh, terrible example of it flying with, uh, lower power. It can do it, I just suck at this apparently, cause, uh, yeah. Hold on, let's just get that down. Okay. Throttle to about two thirds, and manage the lift on the nose. Yeah, I, I remember now that with the lower throttle, you have to be a bit more careful with the uh, lift fans. Oh Jesus! Because if you're not careful, you will uh, do exactly this, which obviously is not <laughs> how it's meant to work. The funny thing is, though, because you have the control over the lift fans, you can like make it shoot the thing up and then fire it back down into the ground. Just, uh, it's just dumb. I hope you enjoy downloading the craft and trying it yourself if you want to. And yeah, thanks for watching. See you in fighting in the aircraft. And uh, uh, don't forget I have a Patreon, maybe, you know, help, subscribe, leave a like, eat my face. Uh, one of those things. <laughs> of course, I wait till the very end of the video to say that. So it's uh, very effective.